So, welcome to this course classical electromagnetism part 2. Part 1 was given at the same site bsc.hcverma.in and uh, that was classical electromagnetism. I had given about uh, 2 years ago that was basically on electrostatics and electrostatics you know when the charges are at rest essentially at rest and they produce electric field. So, that production of electric field its relation to the charges which are producing this field then uh, if the field is there and the charges are there how they move then interaction with materials if we have materials conducting materials insulating materials and then there is an electric field. So, how do they interact those things come under this electrostatics. So, this was electrostatics and uh, in continuation the next part we will be giving in this course and uh, this part 2 which is starting today that will be on magnetostatics. So, you have electrostatics and you have magnetostatics. So, in electrostatics you have electric field produced by the static charges and here you have magnetic field produced by the constant currents ok not changing with time. So, in electrostatics you have some q 1 placed here, some q 2 placed here and so on and then uh, they produce some electric field. So, this is how the electrostatics is described and these things should not change, there should not be any time dependence on the charge distribution in principle that is the definition of electrostatics. Although, if there are small velocities it does not matter much and we do apply the laws of electrostatics for slowly moving charges also ok. But uh, these charges should uh, not change with time. So, if you talk in terms of the charge density then this d rho d t this should be 0 for electrostatics. Now, here in magnetostatics you have currents, you have currents I 1, I 2 you have different currents and these currents produce magnetic field. So, these this is E and then these produce magnetic field and if these currents are not changing with time is the same wire or same uh, material in which the current is going the magnitude of the current the direction of the current they do not change with time we call it steady current. So, if the magnetic field is produced by steady currents which is not changing with time then uh, this is this area is known as magnetostatics ok. And so, we will be talking mostly about uh, this magnetostatics in this course depending on how the course goes and uh, how it evolves we can do some other things also, but basically it will be centered focused on this magnetostatics. For those who have joined this uh, this uh, site for the first time uh, let me tell something about the management of the course. Of course, if you are here you have come through this only. So, this is a site created by IIT Kanpur and the platform which is used in this is called MOOKIT and you have all registered on this that is why you are here in this course that is why you are listening this uh, lecture and this IIT K, CCE and Shiksha Sopan. All the lectures which are recorded, they are recorded at uh, Shiksha Sopan uh, place which we call Sopan Ashram 
and the editing the video editing all these things are done here and the course management is done by this uh, IIT Kanpur team so that is one and in this course we will be having uh, three lectures per week okay and that will be released on Tuesday Thursday and Saturday so in general there may be some changes uh, but in general the lectures will be released on Tuesday next lecture will be released on Thursday next lecture will be released on Saturday so per week three lectures but then uh, there will be some examinations so some four or five examinations will be there four to five MCQs multiple choice questions multiple choice questions mcq this kind of quiz will be there in the total number of quiz we are aiming at four to five let's see how it evolves and the the structure of the quiz is also very important to to know for the newcomers and that is in this quiz you will have questions each question will have uh, four five or six uh, options and you have to choose choose the you have to choose the correct options so, four or more options A, B, C, D, etc. And then multiple options may be correct, not necessarily one only. You can have two correct options out of uh, the given option, three correct options, four correct options, and so on. So, multiple correct options. will be there and you get uh, marks only when right you get marks only when all the correct options are chosen and no wrong option is chosen there is no partial marking. So, if uh, let us say we have A, B, C, D these are the options given and suppose B and C are correct these are correct. So, if you have chosen B, if you have chosen C and you have not chosen A and not chosen D, okay, you have to choose all the correct options. So, B and C are correct, you have to choose B and you have to choose C, but you do not have to choose any of the wrong options also. If you choose this option also A option which is not correct or D options, then you are gone there is no partial marking you get 0. You might have chosen both the correct options, but still you can get 0 marks if you have chosen A also or D also or both of them. Similarly, if you have chosen only C, you have not chosen A, you have not chosen D, so you have not chosen any of the wrong options, but you have also not chosen any all of the correct options then also you get 0. So, the only way to get uh, more than 0 marks in a question is you mark all the correct options and do not mark any of the wrong options. So, that is how the quiz will be evaluated. We generally give uh, 48 hours of time in some cases it can be more also, but not less than this after the quiz is floated that means we will announce there is a announcement section on this website there is an announcement section when you log in on the left side you have uh, several uh, items and there itself it is announcement keep looking at that keep going there and see if there is uh, there is some announcement Okay. So, every quiz will be announced uh, uh, well before the quiz starts is opened on in this announcement section. So, keep visiting this, keep looking at this if there is some announcement. So, if uh, you find that yes at a particular date this quiz starts there we will give it starts on let us say 17th of September and then it will close on 19th of uh, September time is given 9 am. IST, IST is Indian standard time 
or 9 pm whatever so those uh, timings will be given here and for this window of 48 hours at least this quiz will be open what does that mean you can go there in the quiz and uh, once again on the left hand side you have several items and there itself you will find quiz so you go to that there and uh, then you look at the questions and you answer them and this will be this will remain for 48 hours you can answer the questions and uh, do not submit do not submit you can save you can save the answer you do not submit it then uh, and, and take your own time but but if this 48 hours or whatever time is given in the announcement if that is passed then uh, you may be in trouble and there, there may be many reasons internet not uh, working well or power was not there or this or that so well before the deadline you should submit the quiz once you have submitted then it is frozen then nothing can be done after that so this is the examination pattern now the most important uh, part is a discussion board which we call forum this is another facility in this uh, MOOCIT platform that you can ask any question or you can discuss with your uh, peers discuss with uh, discuss with instructors anything that you want to discuss on the course about the course okay so once you go to this forum then uh, there is a window where you can type your question and this question will be visible to everyone who logs in all your fellow students all your fellow participants and the instructors like me we will all be looking at we can look at your questions if you are asking a question we say that you have created a forum post if you have initiated you have put your question there you have created a forum post and then anyone who wants to comment on that reply on that uh, can reply there and that reply will appear there uh, and uh, so you can also apply others post so this way the discussion uh, will go on and I will also be occasionally looking at uh, at this discussion forum uh, it will not be possible for me to look at all the posts which are there because they are always in thousands in the course but occasionally I also look at that and I also reply some of the questions but then uh, the participants themselves reply to each other and most of the queries are solved so that is the structure of the course this way the course will go the total duration will be somewhere between 3 to 4 months somewhere around little more than 3 months probably some uh, 14 weeks 13 weeks like that so you have to be prepared that uh, this is the time this much time you have to devote uh, together with your college or together with your regular classes and all that that is about the structure now let us come to this magnetostatics once again so let us do some stuff which uh, you did in class 8 so this is a bar magnet which is normally used in the laboratories this is another bar magnet you have this uh, white dot here white dot here which signifies that this end is the north pole and the other end is the south pole so if i place the magnet here north pole is uh, this side and this other magnet north pole is here and if i bring this north pole close to the north pole of the first magnet it goes away right so all this you have done uh, fun in class 8 level and similarly if i bring this uh, north pole towards the south pole it attracts now the question which we will be addressing here is that this magnet does not repel or attract this magnet this repulsion that you are seeing here is not the force exerted by this magnet on this magnet or the attraction that you are seeing here is not the force by this magnet on this magnet the magnets are supposed to create the magnetic field 
the job of this magnet is to create a magnetic field everywhere around and then uh, it is the duty of this magnetic field to exert force on the other magnets. So, as we did in electrostatics this is also a two step process uh, this magnet is producing magnetic field all over all over and whether this magnet is here or not this magnet is doing its own duty to produce magnetic field and if there is a magnetic field somewhere and then the other magnet comes there then we say that okay there is a force so it's the magnetic field which exerts force on the magnets so that's a uh, one uh, uh, very important thing that everyone should uh, remember similarly we have uh, a compass needle similarly we have a compass needle that also you know this is a compass needle and its uh, needle stays in north south direction unless there are other magnets or magnetic materials or currents in the surrounding otherwise because of the earth's magnetic field which exerts forces on this compass at the two ends it always stays in north south direction now if i bring a magnet here then uh, you see what happens if i bring a magnet here yes you can see the magnet is producing a magnetic field and that magnetic field is exerting force on the compass needle that itself is a magnet and that is how we detect the magnetic field this compass is kind of instrument to detect the magnetic field if there is a magnetic field then uh, it will deflect but you also know that if you bring a, not a magnet but a normal nail for example then also there is a force on this and it deflects how does that uh, work the magnet has produced the magnetic field correct but how does a nail which is not a magnet that can also deflect this compass needle so look at this nail it's not a magnet it's not producing magnetic field but still if i bring this uh, nail close to this compass needle you can see that the compass needle deflects so now if it is not producing a magnetic field how come this compass needle is experiencing the force the thing is compass needle also creates a magnetic field this compass needle itself is a magnet and therefore it creates a magnetic field and when this uh, nail iron nail is placed in this magnetic field this magnetic field magnetizes the nail that's a um, interaction between the material and the magnetic field if you have a material a solid material or a liquid material in a magnetic field then magnetic field interacts with the molecules and atoms and this and that and gets magnetized once this nail gets magnetized then it will produce its own magnetic field and then that magnetic field will exert force on the compass needle and it will deflect okay so at this moment my nail is not uh, unmagnetized it is magnetized it is a magnet now but then uh, this uh, nail does not retain this magnetism for a long time if i move it uh, further away from the field then uh, this again gets unmagnetized so that is the difference between a permanent magnet and a temporary magnet there is another uh, demonstration very interesting and that is you see a solenoid here you see a solenoid here and this solenoid is connected to a power source this solenoid is connected to a power source and i can just uh, switch it, it on from here and then uh, there will be a current in this okay so if i place the this uh, compass needle close to the solenoid there is no deflection it will stay in north south direction there is no current in the solenoid and there is no magnet no nail nothing uh, which can deflect this compass so here is the power source here is the switch and i'll just press this switch to pass current through this uh, solenoid 
and you see what happens to the compass. See the deflection and then I switch off the current and it again goes to its north south position. So, what does this say? What does this say? It says that when you have a current in the solenoid, the solenoid also produces a magnetic field. Right? I have switched on this, this current in the solenoid and it produces its own magnetic field and that magnetic field is, is uh, exerting force on the two ends and therefore, it is rotating. So, essentially you have uh, two ways apparently. So, apparently you have two ways to produce magnetic field. One is you just bring a magnet and place it somewhere and you have a magnetic field around this and another way is to bring a current, pass a current through some circuit and then uh, around this magnetic field is produced. Now, these two seemingly different they are not different fundamentally because what the magnet is what the magnet is it is equivalent to uh, small 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 atomic currents you know in the atom you have electrons and the nucleus the electrons are in motion so those electrons which are in motion and also there is something called spin of the electron it is not that the electron is spinning as such as earth spins on its axis, but still it, it behaves like that okay. and this is spin property of the electron also creates a magnetic field. So, all that uh, actual current because of the motion of the electrons and then the spin of the electron they all produce magnetic field and therefore, each atom in this is kind of a magnet which produces magnetic field, but that is from current and all those tiny tiny atomic currents they are equivalent to a current on the surface of this magnet equivalent it is not that the current is going from here to here to here to here to here no in each atom all the electrons are loyal to the nucleus no electron is going away from its nucleus, but then uh, they are their sense of rotation or their motion uh, or whatever is such that taken together all the atoms it is it is as if there is an actual current on this uh, surface. So, this magnet is also a current right and that is why you, you, you read that uh, uh, a bar magnet is equivalent to a current in a solenoid and that we had seen here. So, basically both the sources that we have shown is uh, just one uh, physics of it there is a current and that produces magnetic field. So, that is it the current this is the source current produces B field. However, there is yet another method there is yet another way where you can create magnetic field without a current and that is if the electric field at some place changes with time. If you have electric field and if that electric field changes with time there is a DDT that also produces B field, but this is certainly not magnetostatics. it is not a statics it is changing with time something changing with time the source of this magnetic field that is changing with time is not magnetostatics this will not be in our syllabus this time. So, we will concentrate on how current produces magnetic field and how this magnetic field interacts with uh, uh, materials and other things. Now, last for today's lecture books. No matter how I teach and how I speak and how I demonstrate ultimately you have to go home and revise the things and read the books and therefore, books are very very important. 
So, the main book that I will be following in this course is this which is classical electromagnetism by H. C. Verma recently published. So, I will only name the authors and let me name the book also in this case classical electromagnetism published by Bharti Bhavan. You can get this book uh, from your uh, booksellers or from the website of Bharti Bhavan. So, this is the base book. Then another book will be the famous, very famous DJ Griffiths Electrodynamics, Principles of Electrodynamics or something like that. So, this DJ Griffiths will be another excellent book. I have uh, uh, extensively studied from this book and taught from this book in IIT Kanpur and uh, for this uh, lecture series also I have consulted this DG Griffiths and the third is by A. S. Mahajan from IIT Bombay retired professor and Abbas Rangwala. So, these are the three books which I have consulted and uh, uh, I have based my lectures uh, on the descriptions given here, descriptions given here and descriptions given here. So, that is all about the course as such, next time we will do some real magnetostatics.